Welcome to Concepts for Thinking. I'm Bree, and today's concept is cherry picking. So cherry picking comes from the actual phenomenon of picking cherries. When you pick cherries, you obviously are gonna skip over old or unripe or rotten cherries and just pick the good ones. And so if, if you're trying to do a scientific study of a particular cherry orchard and you wanted a representative sample of cherries, you wouldn't take it from the cherries that have already been, been picked because those are going to be exceptionally um, good looking cherries, ripe, nice cherries. And so cherry picking is this metaphor for various ways in which in making arguments and uh, assessing reality, scientists, philosophers, or just people in the everyday end up um, choosing from a non-representative sample or um, ignoring relevant data. So in various forms of cherry picking, I'm actually going to do several videos covering um, these specific concepts in detail. But for the cherry picking video, I'm gonna just talk about a few of the different forms of cherry picking and how they, they can be problematic. Um, one of them is called sampling bias. This is known in science. Um, there's, there was recently, um, actually, well, 2010, I believe, a very famous influential paper um, by Joseph Henrik and colleagues called the weirdest people in the world or weird people is an acronym, um, stands for Western educated, industrialized, rich and democratic people. Um, and what, what he argues and shows in this work is that most psychology studies are um, non-representative. They, they choose from, you, often, oftentimes um, undergraduates at elite research universities are the subjects in psychology tests and experiments. And then um, the psychologists try to generalize about human nature from that biased sample. And that's a huge problem. So this is, this is an instance where it's not necessarily that scientists are, tr are trying to bias their sample and reach a particular conclusion. Rather, it's that they have this very convenient pool of participants that they can use for psychology experiments, but it leads to systematic bias in psychology studies. Um, so sampling bias is, is one, um, one form of cherry picking that you have to, uh, if you're in science, you have to work really hard to avoid. If, if you think about like polling data for um, elections, sorry, I'm petting the dog down here. <laughs> um, polling data, it, it's very difficult to find a representative sample that will really predict who's gonna turn out in an election and vote. And that's why there's a certain amount of error, no matter how much um, the, the pollsters try, there's gonna be a little bit of a, of a difference between what the poll, polls say about, let's say, a pre presidential race or a congressional race and what actually happens. So there are other, there are other forms um, that are maybe often more deliberate. So anecdotal arguments are arguments where you, you draw from particular stories and anecdotes a little story, um, a particular example. And you draw on those examples, those anecdotes that support the position you're taking and you ignore all the other ones. And that's a really, that's often deliberate. Um, sometimes it's totally accidental. We can, we can fall into anecdotal argu arguments without realizing that we're being biased and cherry picking. There's kind of a sister concept with anecdotal arguments and that's called confirmation bias. This is a psychological phenomenon where people in general tend to be really sensitive and interested in uh, information that supports their prejudices, that confirms, that's why it's called confirmation bias. But we, we also then tend to resist or ignore or um, deny everything that does not confirm our prejudices. So we have this bias um, towards everything that's confirming um, what we already believe or what we want to believe. And that's a form of cherry picking as well because we're not getting a representative sample of as it were, uh, of cherries. And the, the fourth one I wanna talk about is uh, false dichotomies. And this is where you have um, maybe the variety of, of positions that you might take on a particular issue, um, but someone presents it as if there's only two. 
and that's what a dichotomy is, the choice between two options. And a false dichotomy is where they present an issue as if there are only two choices. They say you're either a capitalist or a socialist and ignore the sort of spectrum of possible economic theories or preferences that you might have um, and pretend that there's only two. You know, you're either in, you, you either believe that Black Lives Matter or you um, support the police. Of course, there are more nuanced positions someone might take. Um, you could believe that Black Lives Matter and also support um, law enforcement, or you could conceivably <laughs> choose, choose neither. You know, you could believe Black Lives don't matter and also be anti-police. Um, there, are, there are various options there. So this is really common in um, po political rhetoric, in all, all sorts of ideologically slanted thinking. And that's a form of cherry picking because again, you're not presenting the full range of possibilities, but you're instead act, acting as if there's only this limited range. The cherry picking is really bad. I mean, in some instances it's appropriate. Like I'm gonna choose a thumbnail for this video and I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick a picture that I think where I think I look good or maybe it's funny or interesting. I'm not going to just randomly choose or, you know, because I want a representative picture. Um, I'm not going, if you look through all the thumbnails for all the pictures on this channel, you're not going to see a representative sample of what I look like. You're going to see my cherry picked photos and that's expected. I mean, similarly, if you're a lawyer and you're, you're arguing a case, no one expects you to present both sides of the, of the issue. People expect you to cherry pick all the arguments that support your client and the other side is supposed to sort of balance you out. And there are many instances where cherry picking is expected and, and appropriate, but there are also many where it's not. In industry, for instance, if pharmaceutical companies or engineering firms were to cherry pick data and that sort of promoted their product and ignore dangerous um, side effects or features of their product, then they, they'd be liable, to, you know, they, they could get sued for that. Um, and obviously in science, if you're cherry picking, you're just gonna have bad science. It's not gonna be useful. Um, and then in, in general in thinking, if you get in the ha a mental habit of cherry picking ideas in a way that su supports your prejudice, you're going to end up with very extreme views. You're gonna end up in a, an echo chamber, just talking to people who agree with you, um, seeking out the, them because they are, you know, you're cherry picking your, your acquaintances, the media outlets that you um, are, are listening to or watching. And indeed, that's what we see in our current society, that there's increasing polarization and um, people are, we are, very much in echo chambers and not talking to each other, not developing nuanced positions. And that's in part because of cherry picking and then that's just amplified by the media environment, by the incentives, you know, economic incentives for media outlets are, are very much in, in favor of cherry picking and sort of playing to a particular audience. And that's really unfortunate. I mean. I understand where it comes from in politics and economics and all of this and how technology, you know, algorithms sort of exacerbate that issue. But if, if the quest, if our goal is to be balanced, disciplined thinkers who think in a nuanced and rigorous way, then cherry picking is, a, you know, getting into a mental habit of cherry picking is incredibly problematic. So I hope this video is helpful for you. I hope you start to notice cherry picking in, in others and in yourself. and. and Use this concept to discipline thinking. Take care.